Today, we're going to show you how to set the IP address of a key digital model that does not feature a USB service port. So most key digital devices, as of time of this recording, have the default static IP address of 192.168.1.239. Now, what does static IP mean is that when you plug the key digital device or any static IP device into your network, the device does not automatically adjust its IP settings in order to jump on that network you've plugged it into. So you may need to change the settings if, for example, you are on a subnet that does not begin with 192.168.1, and that's what we're gonna do today. Or perhaps you need to change this IP settings if you have multiple key digital devices because you don't want them all to be on the same IP address. You need a unique IP address for each. So when we look at the manual, we try to make it very, very clear about what is the default static IP address, just so that uh, you don't spend a lot of time, uh, waste a lot of time trying to find that. And here is what we're referring to when we say, uh, say a key digital model without a service USB port. Some devices do have a USB port that's uh, typically now a USB micro port. And that does make it quite easy to set, set this up, just connect and open up the key digital management software as we'll get ahead to. But there are still at the time of this recording, a few devices that don't have that USB service port. And that's why we made this video. And what we're going to do is just connect uh, a network cable directly from the laptop to the key digital device. We're not going to go through the network quite yet. It will go directly through. So as I mentioned, um, I'm on a different IP subnet from 192.168.1. And I, could, I know that by going into my command prompt and typing in IP config, all one word. And we see that I'm on a 10.0.0 type network. And again, the key digital is on 192.168.1. So what we wanna do is um, head into our Wi-Fi settings, just so you could visually see how this looks to you when we connect everything. We're gonna go into our network and internet settings. And we're going into the ethernet settings where we see that the cable is not connected. We're going to the change adapter options. And we see right here, again, unplugged. So it's at this time that I'm now going to connect my ethernet cable. And we see now that it has detected a connection and it is identifying uh, the network it's on. I'm gonna go ahead now and either double click or right click properties. And we head into the IPv4 settings, double click. And we see right now, and this is what most of your computers will be at is the uh, option for obtaining the IP address automatically. In other words, your computer is normally a DHCP device. It, jump, it, it, it adjusts its settings to, uh, to jump on the network you've plugged it into. But what we wanna do now is set the IP address of our computer, because this is the IP address of our computer we're doing on this ethernet port, to be something on the 192.168.1 subnet. And I could choose anything here, as long as it's not that 239, um, because that's what our IP address is of our key digital device. And 255.255.255.0 is our, uh, I've just clicked in here and this automatically populates. Um, without getting too in depth, I actually like to do 255.255.0.0, which allows me when I do my key digital scan to find all devices in the 192.168 subnet, I don't have to specify the last two or the second to last octet as a one. Now, this is the other thing we manually enter, 192.168.1.1 as the default gateway. Um, so it's, it's just the first three of the octet and then that uh, last should be dot one. So these have to be separate, the IP address of our computer and the default gateway. We press okay, we press okay again, and we should actually see, here we are, it's refreshing the ethernet settings to identify. So now my computer itself is on a, um, is, so we see here, here's the wireless we saw before, is still 10.0.0, but we see the ethernet is 192.168.1. So we're actually running dual networks for a computer, which is handy in the case of um, setting up uh, our, um, 
of uh, when we need our key digital tech support to come into your computer. So the next step is, and we could do this two different ways, but we're gonna show you the most simplistic way. We open up Key Digital Management Software Pro software, which I've downloaded for free from the Key Digital website. I open up the software, give it a moment to open, especially if it is the first time that you've opened it. And just a disclaimer here, please do not remove KDMS Pro software from within this KDMS Software Pro folder. Uh, from time to time, people drag it to their desktop. Please do not do that. This is not something that gets installed, as in it, it is an executable, and therefore it requires all of these different assets inside of the folder in order to run properly. And we see it here. And we're going to now press network scan, where the KDMS, which is capable of scanning on your different networks, it's going to ask you, do you want to scan the 192.168.1 network or the 10.0.0 network? So this is quite handy. Uh, I choose the 192.168.1, and the scan begins. And this is going to scan through the entire uh, 254 potential IP addresses of the 192.168.1 subnet. So it starts at, <clears throat> at zero, and it's going to work its way all the way up to 254. So it does take about a, a minute or so. And if that IP address were a lower IP address, we most likely would have found it already, but because the range is all the way through two, from zero to 254, um, that's why it, it finds it in the later half. So we go ahead, we found it now, okay? Uh, 192.168.1.239, here's our uh, key digital device. And I'm going to do two things. I'm going to update the IP address to be 10, dot zero dot zero dot 239 and before i do that it's uh one more good um practice is to make sure that what you are changing it to is open uh it's not already occupied so i'm going to ping space 10.0.0.239 just to make sure before i change it that there's nothing there already and we see that there's nothing there and it's going to give me that result a few more times, 10, 0, 0, 239. And just like before, we have to match that gateway, all three of the octets, and then we just leave that fourth octet as one. We see that these settings here are green. We press save, and it's now going to apply that updated IP address, and it is going to reboot our key digital device. Okay, so the device is now rebooted with the new IP address. So what I'm going to do now is actually unplug my network cable from my computer. And I plug the network cable from my key digital device into my network. So now I will, with that device connected into the network, as we perform the new scan, we see that the key digital management software doesn't give us the option to choose dual networks any longer because my laptop is only on a single network now, which is the 10.0.0 network, which it's connected to via Wi-Fi. And the key digital device is plugged in to that 10.0.0 network now with an IP address that has been assigned that is 10.0.0, right? So we see here that it start, started to find some key digital devices. I have some other things on my network, um, but when we complete the scan, we see the switcher. And now at this time, we could do a number of other settings in here, but I do wanna just spend a moment on a final note, which is from time to time, Key Digital's uh, tech support might ask you to um, send a line string command manually to the unit, to a key digital unit. Um, and so I'm gonna show you here, we open up TerraTerm 10.0.0 and I enter the IP address of the device I'm connecting to. And uh, sometimes we use Telnet port 23 or other port 23, either way, as long as it's port 23, you should be okay. And now I'm going to press okay and that socket has been created. So I'm now connected to the key digital device and I could enter the command string that the key digital tech support technician has, um, has uh, informed you to type in. Uh, and we see the feedback. Or we might, at tech support, just tell you to type in H uh, for help. 
which gives us a full uh, feedback of the API, uh, the possible commands you could send, or STA for status. And uh, let me just send that one more time. And you know, it, it did just uh, kind of automatically do something there. That's because I'm running K KDMS Pro and my Telnet session at the same time. Um, so we're getting the activity in both windows. And that's everything.